Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown, and we're delighted to welcome you to our live Census 101. Now more than ever, it is imperative to be counted in the census. And here to tell us why and how, I'm delighted to bring to you Maria de la Luz Garcia, the director of the LA Census here in Los Angeles, and council member Curran Price from District 9. Nice to have you both here. Thank you. Thank you. You know, there's so many issues at stake right now. There are so many passionate subjects that people are thinking about, and yet the census feels like it might take a back seat to that. But that's exactly the opposite of what is happening. The census is imperative right now, is it not? That's exactly right. The census is really the foundation of our democracy, and we get so many benefits from achieving an accurate count. Right now, for instance, the city is receiving uh, millions of dollars for COVID response from the federal government. Those funds are determined by census counts that we use and will be using for the next 10 years. So when we don't achieve an accurate count, the, the federal government won't know how many resources to send our way so that we can respond to things like COVID-19, to be able to provide additional resources to people who are suffering the economic impacts of, of going through a pandemic. People right now are applying for unemployment insurance uh, and getting unemployment benefits at record numbers. Uh, and all of those benefits are all used by federal government to uh, get accurate numbers for the number of people that live in this area and give us resources for responding for. Okay, so just on a very basic level, what exactly is the census? So the census is a uh, count of everybody living in the country. Uh, and so it happens once every 10 years. Uh, and so we basically send out workers all across the country and uh, get people counted. Okay, and Council Member Price, District 9, for some reason, has, has this sad reputation of being a really difficult district to count. Is there any kind of rationale or reason behind that? Well, well first of all, let me say thank you for, uh, for joining us today. The of census, uh, as Maria pointed out, so very, very important especially in uh, urban areas, in black and brown communities like the ones uh, I represent. And historically, these areas have not returned the census forms, and so there's been an undercount. And we don't get an accurate uh, data on individuals living there. So it's very, uh, very important. Uh, the importance of this census really helps to identify programming uh, to assist in small, bu assist small businesses, um, health programs, uh, programs for our youth, programs for our children, uh, for our elderly. These are all programs so very, very vital. And we have not, we've missed out sometimes on the funding because our numbers have been low. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons why people don't uh, return the census form. We have a, a, a number of renters, high propensity of renters, in fact, in, in CD9. Uh, and so sometimes people are transient, they just don't return the forms. Sometimes they may be intimidated by the language, maybe a language issue. Uh, which is uh, not the case here because uh, you know there may be many languages uh, able to uh, respond. Uh, we have uh, a high number of uh, youth, young people, those under uh, 18. In fact, in the Ninth District, a third of the population is under under 18, and so uh, we find that where we have lots of youth, sometimes there's an undercount. So we're just encouraging uh, neighbors and, and friends to be counted and to make sure everyone in your household is counted, so that we can have an accurate picture and to, to make sure that we get the resources that we deserve and that we need uh, in our community. Maria, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. You know, I use the words hard to count. Mm -hmm. So how do you define some place that's hard to count? That's a great question. And the council member is absolutely right. People um, are hard to count because there have traditionally been uh, hard to reach. Uh, so the Census Bureau has had a difficult time uh, getting to these families to be counted. And it could be for a number of reasons. Uh, there's families that are just hard to contact uh, because they might move around a lot. Um, in Los Angeles, we have a high rental population. And so people who uh, you know, only take out a rental agreement for one year might not live in the same location uh, from one year to the next. And so because this is a process that happens only once every 10 years, uh, those families might be actually hard to contact. Uh, there's also uh, people who 
uh, might be hard to interview because there's a language barrier between the Census Bureau interviewee and the interviewer. Uh, and so those households that might not have somebody living there that has a proficiency in English to respond to the census uh, may opt not to participate because of that language barrier. Here in Los Angeles, we try to uh, mitigate that challenge by uh, providing support and resources uh, for language assistance. Uh, but again, this is a federal process, and so uh, you know we do the best that we can. Uh, but again, that might be one reason why uh, some families might be hard to count. We also have among the highest popu uh, population of immigrants living in Los Angeles. And right now, immigrants are uh, not really um, confident that their information is gonna be kept safe and confidential uh, with the federal government, given that the government has not demonstrated uh, their best interest uh, at the moment. So uh, these families are rightly so, uh, feel um, like their uh, privacy might be, uh, might, might be um, compromised. compromised. So, uh, so there's different reasons why populations are hard to count, but the Census Bureau defines hard to count populations as populations that are uh, racial and ethnic minorities, uh, immigrant populations, children zero to five, uh, who have historically also been uh, hard to count. Uh, there's also uh, communities that are hard to count, uh, like seniors, college students. So all of these different uh, populations that for one reason or another uh, are uh, populations that the Census Bureau has had a hard time enumerating in the past. And that's what uh, is gives us the ability to be able to look at uh, maps and data uh, to try and project where we need to uh, focus our resources and energy to try and get these populations counted. And, and also, you know, the, just kind of piggybacking on Maria's comments, people are just distrustful. They just don't believe that the government is there to help. Uh, and so, uh, you know, not just the, the, those who are have the immigrant uh, issues or background, uh, but many times citizens just don't feel that the government is really working for them. So they're hesitant to, to share information, to provide details and data about what's happening inside their household. Uh, and we just, we're just trying to encourage folks to let them know, one, this information is confidential, and it's vitally important that we have so that we get our fair share of the resources uh, from the federal government on programs that will be helpful to our mm -hmm. community. Right, so it, it's a misinterpretation of uh, how the information will be used because the use, the the usage of the information is actually to the benefit of everybody who is hesitant to be counted. But you were talking about maps and you were talking about the, how to see this. So we can see that we have a map that we can pull up. Mm -hmm. And and where are we uh, in regards to the so count? How's yeah. LA doing in terms of all of that? In particular, you know, let's let's deal with district. Yeah. Five. So uh, the city of Los Angeles as a whole right now has a self response rate of just over 51 percent. Uh, so just is over. That, is that good? Is that bad? That, that is a, a little bit below average from what other municipalities across the country are at right now. So okay. uh, we're not keeping pace with other municipalities across the country. Uh, and that's not surprising or shouldn't be surprising because we are the largest city within the hardest to count county in the entire country. So we're really in ground zero when it comes to hard to count populations. Uh, the fact that we're lagging behind other municipalities is not too much of a surprise. So just over half of our population has responded to the census questionnaire citywide and are really our hardest to count areas geographically in the city are areas that we had already identified as hard to count. Uh, and so on the map that you see on the screen, uh, there's really uh, the shades of blue and purple. Uh, those are areas that have higher self-response rates. So the deeper purple areas have the highest self-response rate at about 70 to 80 percent response. Uh, and then uh, if you go down to the lavender, um, they're above 50 percent. So uh, they're actually performing above average. Uh, the areas that are hardest to count in the city of Los Angeles are those areas that you see on your screen that are dark brown. Uh, to burnt orange, orange, and then peach colored uh, slash yellow. 
And so the darkest brown areas are those census tracts that have a response rate of zero to 15%. Zero to 15%. Yes, and okay. uh, in the city of LA, those chunks of areas are places like downtown Los Angeles, South LA, Central Los Angeles, Northeast Los Angeles, East Los Angeles, uh, and uh, parts of the harbor. And so when you zoom into places like Council District 9, uh, Council District 9 doesn't have a single census tract above 50%. So all of the census tracts right now are responding below 50%. And some of those areas are between 0 to 15%, like uh, the darkest brown census tract in that uh, Council District is where USC is located. USC is uh, obviously right now shut down because of the pandemic, and so students have gone home. Uh, and so uh, you can imagine how either households that uh, are around the area are currently vacated because students are not living there, and students that were living on campus are no longer there uh, as well because they've gone home uh, for the summer. So, uh, so places around uh, USC are um, in the northern part of Council District 9, like Jefferson Park, Adams, um, and Expo Park are all experiencing lower than average response rates. And these are the places where right now we can really make a difference by making sure that uh, people who are living there currently are responding to the census in the way that best uh, fits their needs, whether that's online, by phone, or by responding to the paper questionnaire that was mailed to their household. So you bring up a good question. How long do you have to be in a particular location to actually answer the census for that location. You mentioned the students from USC that would populate the area at least to a certain degree are not there because it's no longer, uh, they're not in school. But say you get a census question and you're just a renter and you're only gonna be there a few more months, should you still answer the census and have that address be yours or is there a window of time in which you live in a particular place that qualifies you for answering the census for that particular zone? Responding to the census, uh, you should respond to the census uh, where you lived on or before April 1st, 2020. So if you're a student at USC and you were living at USC for a majority of the time before April 1st, 2020, uh, that's where you will have, should have responded to the census. If you had gone home early because the uh, university closed, uh, then you're, um, you would still have to respond to the census as if you were living in or around USC. Um, so that's a very important distinction, uh, is that people are responding to the census to where they lived the majority of the time on or before April 1st. So if that happens to be uh, at a college campus or around a college campus, that's where the student would respond. Because even the pandemic shifted not only students, but a lot of people's living situations. Mm -hmm. So, Council Member Price, I'm sorry, I almost interrupted you. You were going to say something about watching um, this no, map. No, no, I'm just going to underscore the importance of, uh, of us responding and, and making sure that we get as accurate a count as possible. We know that, as I said, our communities, our black and brown neighborhoods especially, are t traditionally undercounted. And so this is an extra special effort we're making to encourage folks to participate uh, in the census. Uh, and to understand how important it is, not just for their families, but for the community at large. Does, does it make you nervous when you see your district and, and <laughs> not, you know, <laughs> having... Well, you know, it doesn't make me nervous. It just makes me know that we have a lot of work to do. Right. Uh, and we certainly are committed to making sure that um, neighbors and friends realize how easy it is and how important it is to participate in the census. Okay, well we do have a question actually from someone who's watching. And so the question is, what are you doing to you know, reach the 20 plus Spanish speaking population in the district, you know? Yeah, so we actually, um, yeah, we are doing a, a lot of things and we have had to pivot our outreach efforts because of the pandemic, just like everybody else, we've been impacted. Uh, with our outreach efforts. And so what we've done uh, to make sure that we continue to encourage households to respond is by operating a remote phone bank operation. So we have been able to uh, utilize the volunteers that we recruited uh, before the pandemic and uh, have asked them to make phone calls on our behalf 
encouraging people to respond and providing them with information and resources. Uh, since the start of that remote phone bank operation, we've been able to call about 44,000 households uh, and been able to uh, refer them to information, uh, and especially in their language if they need language assistance. Um, we're still making those phone calls. So if you're uh, tuning in to us right now and you wanna get involved, uh, please help us make those phone calls. We are still taking volunteers. You can uh, sign up at census.lacity.org and, uh, and help us make those calls. Encourage your community to respond to the census questionnaire. Because you, as you said, you did have to make some adjustments of the knocking on the door and speaking to people you know, directly, I am sure, was not something that could continue with the pandemic. And, and I'm sure that also was an issue because that would have been an opportunity for people in a safe space to ask questions and get some things clarified before they felt comfortable. So the phone bank, I'm sure, is the best way to do that now. Absolutely. It's a great way for us to be able to continue to spread the good word about the census and still keep people safe at home and uh, make sure that they're, that they're keeping themselves safe. Now we've been correlating the importance of the census to what has been currently happening. And I know in your district, you know, what has happened with the pandemic in terms of testing and that sort of thing has some ramifications to what the census had told, you know, the government about your area before. So what are some of the things that the census helped with COVID-19 in terms of testing, et cetera? Well, we certainly have been encouraging uh, greater testing. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that we've got a number of sites, test sites uh, in CD9. Uh, and there again, it's a, been an effort of a public information campaign, encouraging uh, folks to, to, uh, to be tested. Uh, it's, it's easy, it's free, uh, and it again, protects themselves and their families and the community. And we're also encouraging them to fill out the census form because they, they both go to making sure that we have a healthy, vibrant community, not just for now, but in the future, especially for our kids. Okay, so basically what is on a census form? What are, the, what are some of the questions? So the information on the census form is actually very simple and uh, people you know, don't need to have a lot of uh, information at the tip of their fingertips in order to respond. Uh, the basic question is, how many people are living in your household? That's the first thing the Census Bureau is gonna ask, right? They just want a total number of a uh, count, a head count. And then after that, they'll ask you about the name, age, date of birth, relationship to that person, uh, gender, and, um, and uh, yeah, relationship to you uh, of every single person living in that household. And then they'll also ask about the kind of housing that you live in and whether you or rent or own. Uh, and then finally, the Census Bureau will ask for a phone number in case they need to ask any follow-up questions uh, for, um, for your household. That's it. They don't ask you about citizenship. They don't ask you about immigration status. They don't ask you for a social security number. Uh, the only uh, real piece of uh, pr uh, private information th that you might want to uh, have some reservations about is the date of birth mm -hmm. uh, and age. Aside from that, you're just really giving the Census Bureau the total count of people that are living in your household and then just basic information about each of those individuals. One person per family, but what if you're in a roommate situation? So let's go ahead and play out some of these puzzles. Sure. Because you know sometimes the basic things are the things that trip you up. Mm -hmm. All right, so you are my roommate. Mm -hmm. Who's filling out the census? Any one of us could fill out the census. It could be yourself or it could be me or individually we can respond on our own. Uh, it doesn't have to just be one person. If you're living in a situation where it's multiple families, for instance, as uh, many of our families in our uh, economically depressed areas might also be living with multiple families and under one roof, uh, each family can fill out their own census form uh, and they could do so online, reporting for each of their family members. Uh, and so uh, what the Census Bureau is most concerned about is making sure that everybody is being counted and, and, uh, and accounted for. So whether it's you, know, you and I as roommates and you decide to respond on our, both of our behalf, that's fine. Uh, if we don't have that kind of relationship and you know, we just share a roof, but you, you know, do your thing and I do mine, 
it's fine that uh, each of us fill out the census on our own. Okay, and what happens if you don't want to say something on the census? What if you don't want to put your phone number? What if you don't want to put, you know, the age or the date of birth of, you know, your husband, child, mm -hmm. grandfather, roommate? It's not mandatory to answer all of the questions. Uh, you can certainly uh, leave some questions blank. The only uh, risk that uh, you uh, that you impose on yourself is basically having a census enumerator follow up with you and your household if uh, there's a need to or if you left so many questions blank that they really need just more information. How can people in your district fill out the census? What are some of the things that your office is working on so that this can be a simple and easy thing for people in Council Well, District again, we're, we're encouraging uh, folks to fill out the form because it's, it's easy, it's, it's painless, uh, and it can be done in a number of ways. They certainly can return the form uh, that they received in the mail. Uh, they can call in, uh, providing information uh, to, uh, uh, to, our, to our phone bank. Uh, they can log on uh, to do it online. Uh, it, you know, it, they can make a phone call. So there are a number of ways that folks can participate, but it's important that they do so. And we're trying to let them know that it's easy, it's painless, it's not, it's not intrusive. You know, we're not going to take all your, your lifetime information uh, to use it for some other purpose. Uh, but these are the kinds of, of uh, this count is important because it really dictates the level of services that we get. Um, many of our community already are, are beneficiaries of, of the WIC program or of the SNAP program, providing uh, foods for their families. Or they are participating in the medical, Medicare program. Uh, or they're a small business, and so they get help from the Small Business Administration, SBDC. Uh, they're just the programs for our youth, for our seniors, a number of programs that really are funded depending upon the census count. And so that's why we're encouraging, and, and, and as uh, Maria pointed out, this count is, lasts for 10 years. These, these figures are in place for 10 years, and so um, we have complaints now about programs that we're not benefiting from. It's because the count 10 years ago was, was low or was inaccurate or, or, or didn't take into account the new uh, demographic realities. Mm -hmm. So now is an exciting time to make sure you're participating in the process, that you are identifying uh, your issues, your concerns, and that you're being counted. That's the most important thing. Be counted so that uh, we can make sure you're accurately represented. I don't think people have a real correlation, and I know we've said this now at least three or four times, but a real correlation to what the census impacts down the line. We started out with the census. It has legitimately impacted how the city has been able to respond to the pandemic. And now you're talking about programs that people who are in desperate need require to elevate mm -hmm. the quality of their own life yeah. and to get a fresh start. Well, you know, it's not, it's not always someone in desperate need. I mean, these are just basic services mm -hmm. that, that citizens are able to benefit from, seniors, uh, seniors or youth. Uh, our, our families, children, um, programs. So it's not just those who are in need who, who are able to benefit from these programs. We all benefit from them. Do you hear personally from anyone in your district about how they feel about the census? Have you gotten questions from people, you know, uh, who directly? Well, th yeah, they, they wonder why is it really important? Right. Uh, you know, how is information going to be used? Uh, many of the things we've discussed already. Uh, but I was, uh, you know, I took the census uh, a couple of months ago and uh, been encouraging my neighbors and friends and constituents to, to do the same. We want to make sure that our numbers uh, at the end of the day are up and, and that we don't uh, fall into the trap of, of not responding. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of it and the reasons people aren't answering is because there's some myth, there's some irrational thoughts, there's some fears. So what are some of the myths that you just want to completely squash? to make sure that people have the confidence in this particular process. Absolutely. So we definitely want to make sure that people understand that the citizenship question that uh, had been rumored was going to be on the questionnaire uh, for uh, two years prior to the actual census coming out, uh, they're not going to ask you for anything about your citizenship status or your immigration status. So. Uh, you're not going to be reporting on your family or your own uh, immigration or citizenship status, so no citizenship question on this questionnaire. Um, there was also some rumors going on through social media about how responding to the census was somehow tied 
to the stimulus checks that were being issued by the federal government for COVID relief. And that is absolutely not true. Uh, your census response is in no way tied to receiving the stimulus check. So uh, you can respond to the census on your own and uh, the stimulus check that your family uh, received uh, is separate and apart from what the census is, uh, is doing. And then we also wanna remind people that your information is private and confidential and is, is secure for up to 72 years. And this is uh, in part due to uh, the Title 13 of the US Code. Uh, so legally, the, the federal government cannot share your information with anyone for any reason, including law enforcement, other government agencies. Uh, and so uh, that includes uh, information that like, uh, for instance, your landlord. So if you're responding to the census questionnaire and you have uh, some concerns about your landlord knowing exactly how many people live in your apartment, uh, don't worry, your landlord is not going to get that information. Uh, all your information is kept private and confidential and secure with the U.S. Census Bureau and it's not shared with anybody for any reason. And then we also uh, want to make sure that people understand that everybody counts. No matter your age, your citizenship or immigration status, the relationship that you have to the person living under the same roof as, as you, uh, everybody uh, everybody counts, including your youngest uh, people living in the household, children zero to five. For some reason- As long as they were born before April 1st. That's right, <laughs> as long as they were uh, born uh, before April 1st. So uh, make sure that everybody in your household counts. Okay, uh, and I know there's also, you know, getting the word out and the outreach uh, to make sure that people understand clearly, concisely, and how they can um, get the, any kind of information that they need about the census. Absolutely. Um, we have been doing this for the last two years just in preparation for the 2020 census. And so uh, we have a tremendous amount of resources that we've developed and are available. Uh, if you are watching us right now and want to get involved and you don't know where to start, first go to our website, census.lacity.org. And then uh, if you want outreach resources, click on our outreach resources tab and you'll find information there in 12 different languages, uh, flyers and posters. Uh, you'll find uh, uh, guides for how your uh, information is kept safe and confidential so you have that explanation uh, and be able to communicate that to others that you're trying to convince to respond to the census questionnaire. We have flyers that list all of the different phone numbers in the different languages. So if somebody in your community needs to respond to the census in a language other than English, we have that flyer for you so that you can hand that out and say, just call this number and respond in the language of your choice. Um, we have PSAs. So if you're more of a social media person and uh, that's how you influence, uh, we uh, have PSAs that you can post directly onto your uh, social media platform through uh, our social press kit uh, website. And social press kit is really great because it really is one click away for you to upload and post census graphics and uh, messages onto your wall. Um, so it really makes it easy for somebody who doesn't want to get too uh, complicated in terms of copying and pasting and uh, you can just really click on something and then have it go directly to your Facebook, to your Twitter, to your Insta. Uh, and then we have plenty of videos that people can share. So um, these are videos that we created uh, using our the volunteers that we've been working with here in Los Angeles. So these are people from our very own communities that are uh, have stepped up and got involved and um, and getting out the word. Uh, there are also some employment opportunities uh, for individuals who have an interest. Uh, there's some part-time employment, I think, from August through uh, end of the year, December. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. Those? The U.S. Census Bureau is still hiring thousands and thousands of jobs for uh, their enumerator, census taker positions. These are the people that are going to be knocking on doors between August and the end of October. And the really great job opportunities that are seasonal, that are flexible, they're good paying jobs. 
and a great way to get back into the job market, especially during these times where uh, you know, so we've seen so many people lose their jobs because of COVID-19. So um, the Census Bureau is still hiring. You can go to 2020census.gov and apply online. Uh, and uh, the sooner you apply, the better, because these jobs are filling up fast, and you better believe that you know that they're going to go away as quickly as they came in. So, well, this is such great information, and, and Council Member Price, I have no doubt that the next time we sit down and talk, everybody in your district has going is going to have uh, filled out the census. Well, they're going to be tested, and there you go. <laughs> it's going to be great. Well, Maria Kern, thank you so much for being a part of this, and thank you for being a part of this. And make sure you go fill out your census form. Thank you.